Uh, thanks for uh, you guys showing up. Uh, I mentioned Hacker Strip Tees on Twitter, and I get a good crowd. And it's like the next time I'm going to be offering cookies. So we'll, we'll see how that works out. Um, I am. I do have to apologize. So uh, the good thing is I'm going to be disappointing a lot less people. Um, the, tr the program said there was a demo. It's like, uh, and unfortunately, as you can tell by the certifications, this is not a technical talk. So. Sorry about that. But I did see on, uh, I did listen to Security Justice Podcast, you know, good podcast, who actually mentioned you should be doing magic tricks for social engineering. So I need, uh, I need a volunteer, I need to help and stuff. You know, who's got a uh, challenge coin? Who here's got a challenge coin? Okay, I was trying to spot the Fed, thank you. Um, no, no, just, uh, uh, just any kind of coin will do. Just, uh, I need a quarter. It's like a gold piece. It's like someone help me out here. I mean, I'm already suffering enough here. Please, someone. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Great gentleman here. Everybody was digging for money. I, I should have said, like, yeah, oh, yeah, uh-huh. That'll happen. Uh, slot machine. Okay. Uh, but what I was going to say is uh, I, I'm going to do this trick. I need science. Let's just. I don't know this gentleman, okay? Wait for it. My four year old loves this. Come on. Sheesh. I'm working with what I got, and it's not much, okay? Help me out here. Sheesh, man. Yeah, you'll get that back now, right? You really want that one. So, um, so okay, what we're going to do is, uh, since obviously we're having a, a little problem here, um, I, I do know another trick. Um, does anybody know Penn Jillette? It's like uh, when I was doing research on the book and stuff, you know, I actually met him uh, doing the show at the Rio, and he does this thing called predictive analysis, where he actually gets a read on the crowd, and then he calls someone up, and he's actually able to tell them what they had for dinner last night. Like within 85, 90, because of the people, you know, geographically, you know, there's not many choices around here. Hacker conference is going to be easier because it's probably pizza. But uh, it's like uh, I'm going to try to do that show. And I'm going to try to see what I can do and see if I uh, see if I can make it work. So let's start with the general read of the audience. Okay, here, who here is married? Raise your hand. Okay, wow, that's good accessory for geeks. Yay. Okay, so who here has children? Raise your hand. Wow, and we're spreading. Awesome. Okay. Now, uh, another good question is, who here has bought a car off a car lot? Not off a of Craigslist, not off of eBay, not found in an alley. It's like, uh, okay, that's a little bit less. Okay, I'm trying to read everybody. Okay, who here has shopped at a grocery store, not Walmart, like an actual grocery store? Okay, wow. Walmart's not totally taking over. That's good. Okay, now also let's go to another one. Let's go and ask the one last one. It's like, who here has bought something off the internet? Raise your hand. Okay, dude, you're not even playing. Okay, come on. Because if you haven't bought something off the internet, you're not playing. Okay, it's like I want. Every, I need cooperation from everybody. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Okay, so now I need one volunteer uh, who, who doesn't mind being a victim, I mean a, a contestant uh, on this little competition um, So uh, for, for this little trick thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to ask you five questions. These questions deal with uh, dietary, social, psychological, um, geographical, and how old you are, your age. Okay, genealogical, I don't know that really well. I'm not that educated. So here we go. So I'm going to ask this, with these five questions, I'm going to ask you what you had for dinner. Now, if I can guess what you, have to, you had for dinner, guess what? I win. It's like, and you owe me a drink. No, not really. It's like, but if I lose and I can't tell what you had for dinner, I will give you a nice little hacker sticker set later uh, after the, uh, the talk because I forgot it because I was working on my slide still for some reason. Uh, and I blame uh, you know, several parties last night. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is like, I'll have those stickers for you if I lose. Okay? So let's go and uh, everybody raise your hand if you are a spouse. If you have a spouse, it's specific because of the, the sociological questions. Uh, if you have a spouse and you want to volunteer, raise your hand. Okay, you right there because you're cute. Yes, right there. Go come on up here. Not that you weren't cute too, sir. I'm just saying. It's like I want to. There we go. 
Yeah, you gotta come up here, come up here. What's your name? Marisha. Marisha, okay. Marisha, it's like, uh, is this your first DEF CON? Yeah. Obviously, because she volunteered, so that's a good thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, so, so uh, what we're gonna do now is we're going to do a uh, little thing. I'm, I'm gonna need you to look this way right here. Okay. Keep your eyes on me. Watch how I do it, okay? Well, actually, I need you to like, right, right about <laughs> there, right there. Okay. There's method to my madness. Yeah. Not usually, but yeah. This time we, we'll say there is. So I'm going to ask you these five questions. Keep your eyes on me, and I'm going to, by reading your body and your facial expressions, I'm going to be able to tell you, okay? Stickers. So, <laughs> yes. While I'm doing that, all I'm going to do is just entertain them. I'm going to put pictures of Lola cats up so it's like they'll, they'll be able to enjoy themselves as well. So, let's start with the uh, first one. Can we switch to the slide so they can see the Lola cats? Thank you. So, here you go. That's a cute picture. So, I'm going to ask you uh, one question first off. And this is going to be a sociological question, okay? So, where did you meet your spouse? Uh, dinner. Dinner at what? Dinner it was a restaurant? Yeah, a restaurant. A restaurant? You know the name of the restaurant? Yeah. What was the restaurant? <laughs> Someone's in trouble. <laughs> uh, swingers. Okay, very good. A cafe, not like a swingers. Oh. <laughs> Am I the judge? I don't think so, okay? So uh, let's, let's go ask with the next question. Now this next question, oh here, I'll even let you look at one of the Lolo cats. See, nice little cute little Lolo cats. Okay, so, so the, the next question is going to be, let's make it a psychological question, because you, that looks pretty psycho. Um, if, no matter what you eat, even if you're a vegetarian, it's like no matter what you eat, do you consider yourself an omnivore, herbivore, or carnivore? Like mostly, like no, 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 no. This is talking about to help get for the oh, dietary yeah, thing. Yeah. It's like, what do you consider yourself a carnivore? Yeah. Ooh, meat eater, be careful here, yeah, guys. <laughs> okay, there we go. So, okay, so you, you think you consider yourself a carnivore? Okay. So now let's ask the next question. Now this question is a geographical question, but we're going to try to use the logistical part of your brain. Okay. So in a number kind of way, how do you associate where you live? So what's your zip code? Yes. <laughs> Nine zero zero three six. Okay, that's good. It's like that shows the logical side of how you how you where you live. Okay. Let's go with the uh, the next question. Now this is more of a dietary question. It's like everybody loves the the internet cat. Um, you can look. It's like it's not bad. These pictures aren't really bad, so don't worry. Um, so um, on a dietary standpoint, uh, what do you uh, like to do if you were at home, yeah. not here? If you were at home, would you like to eat out? Eat in or have delivery? Uh, delivery. Delivery. Yeah. My kind of girl. I like that. <laughs> so it's like, so there we go. So that, that's your dietary question. Now, one more last question. And of course, I pick someone that's going to be very difficult and stuff, you know. It's like, because, uh, you know, I know this is a really great question. Uh, but on a geographical, so I can tell what your generation and stuff is, it's like, what's your birthday? The year or the day? Just give me the whole birthday. It would be great. I'd appreciate that. <laughs> March 2nd, 1982. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, that is social engineering. Thank you very much. It's like uh, she was a great sport. Uh, unfortunately, I've got some good news and bad news. The, uh, the good news is uh, you get a sticker set because I was lying about telling you what you had for dinner. It's like uh, that was uh, not true. But bad news is that was a social engineering uh, demo right there on how easy it is to be able to do it. I started off. You can get back down. So, yeah, like, she wants to get down now. So, I'm, I'm going to get kicked by a husband later. Uh, not the first time. Um, so, uh, so this is what we're going to talk about. It's like that was so easy with social engineering. I started by lowering your expectations. Came out a little harried. It's like it was a little dejected. It was like, you know, this is how, how is this going to work? Did a really lame magic trick. Yes, I realized that was lame. Uh, one more slide. I forgot to show you what, what this is all about because the fact, what did these questions have in common? They call Sarah Palin her email address. Those three main red questions were the password reset questions for Sarah Palin's email. That's social engineering. That's how you get those kind of uh, the data. You give them to think about one thing. So busy thinking about, oh, he's never going to guess what I had for dinner. It's like he's not going to get, I'm going to get a sticker. I'm going to show him wrong. It's like you get them engaged. You get them thinking that they're doing one thing when they're actually providing information for another. So that was our demo, and, and thank goodness the demo gods were, were nice and it didn't fail too much. 
So let's get right back onto uh, what else is going on. This is me. It's like yes. It's like it, uh, trust me. I'm going to be talking about both my jobs. It's like I've never. No one I know actually has ever seen me in that suit except for on Halloween during my day job. But uh, let me talk about that more. Um, I've got two jobs. I got a night job and a day job. The day job is I'm the uh, AVP of Information Security for National Financial Institution, where I monitor firewalls, IDS logs, and stuff, you know, and handle the day to day stuff. But my night job is I'm the CIO, Strategy One Solutions, where I go and break things. I've written a book, uh, Dissecting the Hag. Yes, it's shameless plug. And um, also um, uh, do some talks around the world and do uh, different kinds of uh, hacking and social engineering engagements as well. So, that's me, and that's enough about me. You can Google the rest. And then let's talk about, I would like to start off with a quote. There's your, uh, I am a CISSP, so there's your Sun Tzu quote as required. So, because uh, this is an InfoSec talk. And uh, that's enough of the Sun Tzu. Let's go with another one. I want to let people understand when we're talking about being critical, not being critical, but let you understand, I'm not a subject, a subject matter, matter expert on this subject of social engineering. Okay, there are a lot of people out here that know it a lot better than me. I do a lot of different research. It's like when I'm researching my books. And also it's like I just like doing this stuff. So I'm a geek who likes to talk. And I talk, you know, a lot. Just there's plenty of witnesses to that here. So, uh, so that's what this talk is going to be. Uh, so I want to use the Theodore Roosevelt quote. But here's the main Theodore Roosevelt quote, Roosevelt quote that I like to use. And that is to educate a man in mind and not in morals is to educate a menace to society. And we're not talking like gang style. We're talking about like this talk hopefully will not just show you how I'm breaking things and getting into stuff, but hopefully how we can start uh, finding solutions to the human element, which is the main problem with our uh, uh, society and stuff, you know, in our industry when it comes to uh, social engineering and information security. Wow, crap. That was just the intro. Okay. But so far, so good. We're doing good. Hold on. Trust me, I needed that. Um, so now we're going to talk about the history of the 36 stratagems. We're going to talk about the history of social engineering. We're going to talk about how social engineering actually differs between cultures. And we're going to discuss the OSI model and go through the stratagems. So uh, my, one of my things I like to say is that if you want to learn how to cook, you go to France. If you want to learn how to paint, you go to Italy. If you want to learn how to conduct military strategy, you go to China. It's like one of the things I've admired about them is that they've got military strategy laid down. They know exactly how they do it. And I've heard people and stuff, you know, one of the strategies out there is like if you have to resort to physical violence, you've already lost the fight. It's more about the mind. It's more about the development of uh, your weaponry and also your treaties and, uh, and then the positioning of your people, which also involves social engineering. So that, that's the reason why I uh, like the 36 stratagems. It's like um, the reason why the... Um, a little bit more about the 36 stratagems is the fact that there are um, 36 different uh, strategies that are written out, given a story to each one to help better explain it. It's like two or three thousand years old. Uh, now, another thing, let's talk about the history of social engineering. I mean, Kevin's good, but actually, social engineering did, you know, occur before him or Frank ever got onto the scene. And uh, one of the um, first noted um, victims of social engineering. The victim of social engineering was Amenhotep III. He was socially engineered by the priest of the Amun, uh, the Amun priest of the, the royal city at that time period, where they were actually, in theory, just controlling his whole dynasty. So much so that upon his death, his son had to move the royal court to Thebes, and that's when the, the royal city became to Thebes, to get away from the influence of the Amun priest. And then he proceeded to wipe out the immune priest, but that came later. But that exactly, so sometimes there are bad consequences, you know, to social engineering. But uh, that was one of the first victims of social engineering. One of the most well-known social engineering attacks that have ever occurred in history is never credited with a social engineering attack. And that's the Trojan horse. We all know about the Trojan horse, about how it's, you know, it's the, the program and how you're able to do it in computer terms. But do you realize the very first Trojan horse was carried, uh, the social engineer carried it out? His name was Sinon. He actually disfigured himself, physically, you know, cut himself up, made himself look, you know, like near death. I mean, that's called method acting, which I'm not going to go that, you know, hard into. But it's like he actually left himself for dead on the beach as the Greek ships left. And this guy was actually able to con 